Hi, my name's Fred Wheeler. Today I want to review a movie and it is Superman Batman Apocalypse. So this is one of the more high quality movies that have been put out for the DC Universe. And I watched this quite a while ago. I've watched it a few times, so I know a little bit about it. This essentially says Superman Batman Apocalypse, but it is essentially an alternative origin story for Supergirl or Kara becoming Supergirl. And to make it more interesting, they're using the Earth location and the world of Apocalypse not to be confused with the X-Men Apocalypse character. We're talking about the Apocalypse world. All of which is not a spoiler because it is plastered all over the front of this cover. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is I didn't like the story concept. I felt that it was such a divergence from the original stories that we have come across in an attempt to make Supergirl cool again. Now, there are a whole bunch of characters in here. This movie suffers from too many characters, too, too many big end franchise characters occupying a movie that really needed to be an origin story. And I know the reason why. Um, most of us know the reason why. Uh, you have a story which is an or origin story for Supergirl, but you don't want to call it Supergirl because there's this movie, real life movie that they made a while back that has tarnished Supergirl pretty much indefinitely. Uh, and uh, this new TV series will hopefully change that. That's been um, playing for some time, for those of you who don't know about it. That's doing pretty well. So that is changing the image of Supergirl on the screen. But this is why they've probably called it Superman Batman Apocalypse rather than Supergirl Apocalypse. Anyway, characters. We have Superman. Now Superman, I like Superman, but this Superman appears to be an angry, arrogant father figure who I don't really like. How the heck did they manage to do that? And there's nothing wrong with the voice acting for Superman, but he goes from such extremes. He's like our loose cannon. Uh, <laughs> Batman. Batman is Batman. He's brooding, he's dark, he's smart, he's clever. There are a few jumps of logic that he comes to that don't make sense at times, but Batman does have a very good scene through this movie, which just shows that he doesn't need superpowers to get the better of the villain. And the villain in this story is a big villain. Kara is Supergirl. I have to say, I didn't really like the character as I was watching it at the very beginning. Uh, that might have been because of the voice acting. I kind of feel it was more because of how she was presented. It changes. I feel a lot different about the character by the end of the movie, which is a good news because she is essentially the most likeable character in the movie. So how the heck did I start off not liking her originally? Uh, because she's a teenager. That's essentially it. And she does teenage things. And she does have an arc. Uh, it sort of doesn't necessarily flow that well near the middle, but it does have an arc at the very beginning as she sort of finds her way on the planet Earth. And then you have to contend with her actually building herself into the character of Supergirl. Then we have Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman actually shows up, surprisingly. Um, I like Wonder Woman, but she feels more like a masculine super heroine who has superpowers and is an Amazon. I, nothing wrong so much with the voice acting. <laughs> the sound of her voice was fine. It was just the way she was presented. She was really flat, like she was just there to fill in the fight scenes. Then we have Darkseid. Now Darkseid is about as big as a villain you can get and it's not a spoiler because it's blasted on the cover of the movie. Darkseid is Darkseid. He's a villain. He doesn't really have any character development. We just assume that he is what he is and we go from there. Surprisingly though, uh, of course Darkseid wants Kara or Supergirl and who wouldn't? But I would like to remind you Darkseid, you're an old man with skin trouble and she's a young teenager. Uh, it's a little weird at times I have to say, 
but uh, you'll get the gist of it. Anyway, those are the characters. In terms of the script, the script is what you would expect. There are a few lines within the movie from the characters that are clever, certainly try to be clever. Uh, they are attempting to be funny, they use jokes, and some of it kind of comes off, and you don't go, ha 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 but you might do a little crack of the smile, which is nice, I guess. Most of this, the, the actual jokes are quite sarcastic. I'm quite sarcastic, so I totally know why I would do it. Anyway, uh, lots of sarcasm, very dry humour. In fact, so dry at times that it's almost brittle. When it comes to the actual uh, scene work in this, it starts off with a bang. Super big bang. It was really impressive. I was really looking forward to it. Really good lighting effects. Scenes were set up. It gave you that atmosphere. It was wonderful. And then the budget kicked in and we were back to a TV series, TV movie quality animated movie. And, you know, that's that's going to happen, but that was a bummer, I have to say. I wasn't terribly... Not to say that the animation in this is not slick, because it is very slick. It's just not as good as it was at the very beginning. The consistency throughout the movie in terms of the actual scene work, the animation, the special effects, and so forth, it changes drastically. Uh, special effects, you're going to see lots of laser blasts and explosions, things blowing up, and lighting effects and stuff like that, so that's great. The music, the music really does attempt to be riveting, which is excellent because music makes everything. It's very dark, it's very sinister, <laughs> uh, but it's definitely um, got a, it, I didn't really like it completely, it certainly tried very hard. Editing, a lot of the scenes are put together in a way that are confusing and have great huge jumps in logic. Even the story has jumps in logic that don't quite make an awful lot of sense. But the scene work leaps and jumps around as well, which is not helpful. The complete atmosphere of the story, it starts off very dark, and then it gets lighter, and then it gets very dark. It's dark and sinister, it's dark and sinister, and it's got some very adult themes. This is not a kid's movie. There's a lot of blood in this thing. So just bear that in mind. You don't want your kids sitting down and watching this. The length of the movie could have been a little bit longer to actually create a bit more character development for the main character, which is Kara, Supergirl, and possibly some of the other characters within this movie, if they're going to actually be there in the first place. My evaluation, I don't do stars, I don't do A's and B's, you know this if you've watched any of my reviews. I would give it a thumbs up. There are some problems, but I would watch it again. I've, I've watched the movie multiple times. I have enjoyed it, but there are a few things that can be done better. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. See ya.